Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode is the Dallas Cowboys running back group. Uh, I've been waiting on doing team-oriented videos until now, uh, just because I wanted to get the 2018 class previews out of the way. Again, all those 2018 class analytics stuff was pre-draft work, uh, essentially, before the, uh, before the actual draft evaluation started to happen. Uh, but I wanted to get to the Cowboys because, one, they're a very good football team. Uh, there's lots of elements to that team that I will be getting into in, in more videos, but particularly the offensive line, linebacker groups. Uh, but I wanted to focus on the running backs today because in from a data perspective, essentially, uh, the, the Dallas Cowboys have probably the deepest group of running backs in the NFL. Uh, when you look at guys like Alfred Morris, uh, Ezekiel Elliott, of course, uh, the, the star rookie, and even Darren McFadden, uh, they have a lot of different backs on that team that, from an analytics perspective, had a lot of positives to them, and even had some very good years from a statistical standpoint, uh, which kind of speaks to the depth that I'm talking about. It's, it's not just that, oh, they did some cool things in college, it's that they have actually had seasons in the NFL where they had very good production or very high-end production at the NFL level. So I wanted to get into a couple of those backs uh, just to give some perspective on running back analytics, first of all, to kind of see the actual application of these analytics onto an NFL team and also to just, you know, have some fun with it, uh, see some things, uh, make some possible predictions on certain players based on their past performances and just go from there so uh, I figured hey let's get into the Dallas Cowboys essentially and starting with uh, production at the college level one thing that all these backs have in common when you're talking about McFad and Alfred Morris uh, Ezekiel Elliott is they all had very high-end total offensive market share production now total offensive market share production for people that aren't very familiar with this term is you take a running backs total yardage uh, so it's rushing plus passing yardage gained and you divide it by the team's total yardage so if a running back had 1,500 all-purpose yards, essentially, or, or total, you know, passing yardage plus rushing yardage, 1,500 yards, and the team had, uh, say, 4,000 uh, yards in terms of the total offense, like the the entire offense had 4,000 yards, uh, then that running back would essentially have, uh, just to get the, <laughs> just to get the math right. Uh, he would essentially have a 37.5% uh, 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 market share production, which is actually pretty good. Uh, but to, to normalize this data, I decided you, you do this for every running back in terms of their career, and you do it for every running back from the last draft to 1969. Uh, and based on that data, 100% of multiple all-pro running backs, uh, the, actually the vast majority of multiple all-pro running backs, had at least 89 or higher when it came to their total offensive market share production, 69 or higher in terms of that total offensive market share score were five-time Pro Bowlers, so all most of the five-time Pro Bowl running backs had at least a 69 or higher in terms of their total offensive market share production, and the majority of the three-time Pro Bowl running backs had at least a 52 or higher when it came to their uh, total offensive mark share production. And what makes the running back group of the Cowboys so interesting is that everybody in their group hit the five-time all the five-time Pro Bowl threshold and only that two of them hit the all-pro threshold. Now keep in mind uh, that these are production thresholds. There's other things to the running back position uh, whether you're talking about athleticism metrics which we'll get into as well or you're talking about uh, just film you know like just the fact that they're good running backs or not that there isn't uh, that they're that they're the types of running backs that can go from one system into another system and have lots of success uh, from a film pr perspective that kind of gets into that kind of stuff uh, but you want backs that are productive at the college level you want backs that are bell cow backs 
And the great thing about the Cowboys group is they're all bell cow backs. They were all guys in college who carried the load for their team at a very high level, uh, which is really important when you're talking about the particular position. So I would say from a production standpoint, they have all those uh, all the marks you're looking for when it comes to that position uh, in terms of all pro potential uh, with McFadden being the only guy who only had uh, pro bowl potential. And then when you come to athleticism, uh, which is another uh, thing to, to, uh, to, to get familiar with uh, when it comes to running back production. And uh, when it comes to that particular uh, group, Darren McFadden uh, had a 56 uh, point nine nine uh, explosive lower body strength score, a 93.96 speed score, and a 96.82 uh, flexibility score. Uh, and some of you guys may be going, well, see, Jeremy McFadden was bad. What I would say is, is that Jeremy McFadden had a lot of injuries in his career, on top of the fact that he had below average explosiveness, which is explosive lower body strength, essentially lower body strength. And, uh, one of the main criticisms, criticisms that people had about McFadden was his lack of ability to break tackles. And his style was very much banging it up and, you know, getting close to contact. Like, his style didn't really mix well with his athletic ability, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, so, it's a little bit of that, which is why film goes into this as well. But he's a very good athlete. Uh, in terms of elite running backs, you want them to have at least 179 or higher athletic score, and he has two. His speed score is 90 percentile, and his flexibility score was 90 percentile coming out of college. Uh, Alfred Morris, on the other hand, he had a 76.16 explosive lower body strength score, a 50.26 speed score, and a 77.58 uh, flexibility score. Now, you might look at that and go, you know, that's not amazing, which it isn't particularly amazing. However, it does, it's, it's all above average uh, for the most part in terms of explosiveness and flexibility. And his speed score isn't amazing, but it is at least average speed for a back his size. And he obviously is someone that has had success in the past, which we'll get to as well when we get to that point. And then finally, we get to Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott's uh, athleticism, he had a 59.59 in terms of explosiveness for his size with an 89.70 speed score for his size. Uh, he did not participate in the flexibility scores, which I was a little bummed out about, to be honest, when he didn't do that. However, he did hit at least a elite athleticism score in terms of his speed. Uh, so he, he at least hit that sort of mark. Uh, but for the most part, when you look at the Cowboys running backs from an athleticism standpoint, they 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 like a lot of things they like speed uh, alfred morris is not necessarily a speed back but all these backs have above average athleticism in some form and two of these backs hit elite levels when it comes to that particular athleticism metric uh, so from that perspective they are all pretty decent uh, from in terms of their athleticism for their size then we get to what they actually did at the nfl uh, level, uh, which gets a little bit more complicated, but not necessarily. Uh, we get to NFL market share production, and this is the same as the collegiate offensive production, you know, total offensive market share production. It's the same as that, uh, but it's at the NFL level, uh, and you'll kind of, it all makes sense when I go through it. But when you look at Alfred Morris, the great thing about him is, is just that he is a back who has proven to be a bell cow back not only at the college level, but also at the NFL level. You know, his rookie season, which is where, you know, his big breakout year, he had a 93.54 uh, total offensive mark share score at the NFL level. He followed it up with an 86.65 score in 2013 with the 84.74 score in 2014 and then he slowly his production kind of dipped uh, to 72.83 in 2015 and then of course he ended up on the Cowboys uh, we only had a 41.83 but that was mainly because he was a, uh, a backup uh, player during that time period but what's clear about Alfred Morris 
and why he is a major asset to have on a team like the Cowboys is that he has he's done it. You know, he's had seasons of production of a starting running back uh, to a bell cow back. So you have some uh, insurance, if you will, if God forbid Ezekiel Elliott were to get injured, you, you would have a back behind him that can give you not quite as good of an impact as Ezekiel Elliott, but at least can give you uh, something, something, you know, can give you uh, enough sort of positives to his overall profile that that's kind of good from that kind of perspective. Uh, so Morris is really great when it comes to uh, his production sort of thresholds. Then we get to Darren McFadden. Uh, in terms of his production and he's had honestly an up and down career uh, when you look at his NFL total offensive market share production at the NFL level you know 2008 to 2009 he was about 80.07 71.33 so kind of middling in terms of his production during that time period but then of course had a big year in 2010 uh, with a 94.79 score Battled injuries in 2011, battled injuries in 2012, was kind of at his lowest point uh, for the most part of his early career in 2013 with 59.37, but slowly but surely his production started to creep up a bit more, 78.04 in 2014, and in 2015 had a 92.28 uh, overall production score on the Dallas Cowboys, which is pretty good as well. So uh, he's another guy who has definitely not had the best career ever, like did not have a career that you would say, oh, he's he was worth how high the Raiders drafted him. Uh, but when you look at his overall career and what he's proven to do, he's another person who has proven that he can be a bell cow back, has proven he's a back who can take on the load. He's had his injury history issues uh, for the most part in his career, and now he's definitely a backup only, uh, you know, as in 2016, he only had a 27.11 score, but it's good to have a back like McFadden on the team, it's good to have a back like Ezekiel Elliott, uh, not Ezekiel Elliott, but Alfred Morris on the team, uh, because these are two backs who, from the college level, have proven to be bell cow backs, proven at the NFL level, had the athleticism that you're looking for as well, they're not necessarily star players, uh, Morris and McFadden are not guys that I necessarily would say are, you know, greatest of all time type running backs, but they are at least above average when you look at the NFL and what they've been able to do in their careers. It's above average, and uh, that really speaks to the depth that you have at the position when you have these types of players that are on there. And then that gets to the final point, which is Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott is a guy I was a very big fan of coming into uh, the, his rookie season. I thought he was the best back that year, uh, hands down, was a guy who could do everything. And his production, his first year as an NFL collegiate in 2016, he had a 97.73 uh, total market share production uh, score. And in many ways, if it wasn't for David Johnson, he would have been the best back in the NFL based on his total offensive mark share production score. Uh, so, tremendous. I mean, it's great that you have a back like Izzy Elliott, and he's someone who, out of all the backs on this list, none of the backs have had um, you know, almost a 98 overall total offensive mark share score season. Like, Alfred Morris hasn't done that. McFadden hasn't done that. Uh, so it's clear that he is the top back. He's proven they can give you a little extra something uh, that those other guys couldn't necessarily do. Uh, but, but this is just awesome. I mean, this I love this Cowboys running back group from an analytics perspective. I think when you look at the athleticism that they all have, uh, you look at the production that they've proven at the college level that has translated to the NFL level in many ways, uh, they haven't exactly had the most consistent success with Morris and, and McFadden, obviously, but it's just great to have a team that has a really great running back in Ezekiel Elliott, you know, probably one of the best running backs in the NFL right now, easily, with two guys behind them to where if injuries happen, you know, again, God forbid, you have that backup, you have that insurance policy, you're, you have some extra stuff uh, behind them, you know, you have that spare tire, I guess, that can at least get you home uh, if, uh, if something bad happens. So I just love this running back group. Uh, I know 
some of you guys may be like, oh, stop gushing about this team. But it's just clear from the data, it's clear from all this sort of information that the Cowboys have a lot of things going for them into uh, 2017. Uh, and running back is just one of those things. So I'm mean, very excited to see where this group goes in the future. Uh, obviously, it's not a running back by committee sort of situation, but it's just one of those things that this is what good teams do. They Not only do they get great NFL talent, uh, but they also get guys that can be backups, be insurance policies. You know, they, they understand the value of an elite player, but also understand the value of having a backup. Uh, and that's just the main thing I love about the Cowboys from that kind of perspective. So again, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video with people as well. Uh, I'm going to be getting to some more videos that are kind of like this. If you if you like these videos, hit that like button. If you want to see more uh, analytics sort of driven topics on uh, NFL teams, I, I'd, I'd love to do that. And I'm going to be doing some more. Uh, but this is just kind of a new thing and just see what you guys feel about it. Uh, but anyways, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.